how do you marry data with AI, not in any order, with the human interaction, ultimately driving the foundation, which was an unsaid statement, which is it's the experience. And that's the driving force in the move forward. It results in the loyalty. It results in the trust in the brand. And it results in the repeat customer as well, while getting the customer in any channel they want to be in, but in a surprise and delight that might be different for you than me, but in the same ecosystem at the same time, which is powered by AI. Um, you have Ruchi and myself here. We'll spend a minute introducing ourselves. We're so excited to share with you some of our takeaways from Dreamforce. We were there this week, excited to what we've heard and learned, and just really looking. You, you get to have a glimpse and a dialogue, a typical day with Ruchi and Mantha today. So Ruchi, do you want to take a minute and introduce yourself, and then I'll do the same, and then we can jump in. Absolutely, Mamda. I share your entire excitement and passion. I'm Ruchi Gupta. I lead the Global Business Services Go-To-Market Strategy at TP and have been in the BPM industry for 25 years. Uh, I participated in the Dreamforce sessions for the past three days. Uh, in fact, I was listening to some sessions even now. Super, super insightful. In fact, Dreamforce has been on my bucket list for ages, so I enjoyed the discussions. I feel the same. So hi, everyone. I'm Mamta Rodriguez. I'm the Global Chief Client Officer for Banking, Financial Services, and Insurance here at TP. Um, I echo Ruchi's sentiments. Um, and, you know, in, in, in addition, wanted to say that it, I'm humbled to be here um, and talking to all of you of what we've heard, learned, and also connected the dots for, um, you know, for our own takeaways as well. It leaves me excited to where we are. So before no, no teasers here, but let's jump in. Um, Ruchi, if I can ask you a question, what was your biggest takeaway um, from Dreamforce? And I know you're still listening to and engaging in the sessions today. And what moment or session really made you see how AI is reshaping the balance between technology, people, and customer experience? Mamta, thank you so much. That's, uh, you know, like I said, Dreamforce has been on my bucket list for ages. The sessions and customer stories were really eye-opening. So I actually attended the entire keynote speak as well. Uh, I didn't get a chance to take a selfie with the robo though. I believe a lot of folks did that there. I think when you look at it, it's really wild to think just about a year ago, most of the buzz was about AI in general. And now the entire conversation has shifted to the agentic enterprise and agentic AI. It's amazing. That's a huge leap in such a short time frame, and there's more to come. Uh, also, if you like looked at all the sessions, and I know you attended some sessions as well, the key theme really was how AI is an enabler by being human powered, right? One of the moments that really stuck with me was the keynote featuring William Sonoma and Pandora when they uh, shared their case study. They have truly embraced the agentic AI era sharing data that has allowed them to create unique personalized experiences for their customers. What I loved most is how they emphasize that time is the most valuable resource today. And it's all about meeting customers where they are, right? And the channels that they have uh, and making things more efficient. By doing this, they're not just enhancing customer experience and connecting the dots seamlessly with front office, middle office and back office but also really giving valuable time back to the employees to work on things that might be more important. So I really feel it's a win-win. And I love the session about just the case studies that was presented. Uh, and Mamta, let me ask you about your thoughts, because I know you've uh, listened to a lot of sessions as well. Yeah. And in fact, you know, wrapping up on your thoughts there, one office, right? We speak about yes. that consistently of, of the one office. I actually listened to the William Sonoma one as well. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> very close to home to me because I like to cook. I like the kitchenware. And it was, you know, it was a really interesting use case of the usage of AI. I, uh, you know, to your question, the the one, um, all the seminars have been great, but the one that really stuck out for me was Ben Altman's, wherein um, he spoke to very three very basic tenets, which I thought were really key of what's the future of intelligent connected financial services, and that's powered by unified data. One, humans still build relationships 
agents do the busy work. Two, humans build the trust. Agents ensure compliance. And right. three, humans bring empathy. Agents bring scale. And when I hear that, I'm like, yeah, that's, Yes, 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 right? And it seems so obvious, but yet I think it's a paramount statement said so simply, and yet simplicity is what drives technology and disruption as well. So I, I fully align to that message, and it's going to be my tenant stuck on my wall in my office as I move forward. And I had actually a question for you. I think this is a very great segue. So Dreamforce, if you saw through the sessions, positioned the agentic enterprise as the next stage of digital transformation, right? So where AI agents work alongside humans, alongside people, you and me, how are you seeing organizations balance this push for innovation with the need for compliance, trust, and governance? And I think you touched upon the tenants as well, but if you delve a little deeper into that, that'd be awesome. Yeah, it is truly a balancing act at this point, especially when it comes to established organizations in my industry, in BFSI's highly regulated industry today, this is where you know financial services generally, which I'm including insurance and banking in as well, are focusing on two areas specifically. One is personalization, to create a frictionless customer experience interaction, and two is leveraging AI to remove and reduce key friction points. So I'll give you an example. One such example of that is building trust in the age of intelligent threats. As the financial industry undergoes profound digital transformation, trust has become more fragile and more essential than ever before. And you say, why is that, right? Like, why is this like a, a disrupt disruptor? Because sometimes technology and AI can also be used for the opposite, right? And so trust becomes paramount in that customer experience. And with customer interactions increasingly shifting to digital channels, fraudsters are also leveraging said channels and AI to exploit those vulnerabilities. So traditional approaches to identity management, authentication, and compliance are just no longer sufficient. But that's the power of AI that can be layered in out in the tech stack, and it's enabling some of the static credentials to become fluid and creating the, the fluidity in the knowing your customer, the creating the fluidity in, in legacy fraud detection systems, which now can have more active engagement. And that's the future of AI-powered identity management. Yep. So, Mamda, that's such a key takeaway from the discussions that was, you know, the agentic AI empowering customer journeys. And like you mentioned, I think fraud and just the entire aspect of trust and transparency in the entire AI adoption is so key. Mm -hmm. uh, when I look at customer journeys, you know, just when you think about moving from awareness to conversion to retention, it is such a repeated brand engagement that you really need to look at you know, regardless of which particular industry you're thinking of. Mm -hmm. um, let me just take an example of in the back office. It's about streamlining processes, enabling autonomous work, uh, with humans providing the intelligence layer, right? Um, a classic example of what you mentioned as well kind of can be translated to the entire order to cash cycle and a seamless value chain from order conception to order receipt to payment to intentional use and experience. And how beautiful is it when you do it with a lot of trust and transparency because there is money involved, right? One of the things uh, that was really emphasized was using data to enhance innovation. Customer insights from, you know, they spoke about Data360, supporting personalized experiences, like you mentioned, targeted messages, product suggestions across platforms. Um, in fact, when you saw one of the case studies, there was a customer, let's call her Julie, right? revisits the sites, agents reviews her past activity to provide relevant support. Now, such data-driven approaches turn marketing into a very dynamic intervention or a conversation rather, underscoring the value of human-centered innovation in today's digital era. Uh, AI compliance, trust, governance are relevant to any new technology. I'm sure the policies will continue to evolve as they look at AI ethics. And I think most of the organizations that spoke about their case studies were very mindful of deploying AI responsibly. Um, I 
attended a dream pitch today, AI for Earth's Future, where entrepreneurs showcase solutions using AI for community and environmental benefits. And they were judged on three things, which are very, very pivotal to leaders, right? One, innovation. The second very key element, scalability. And the third one, impact. Uh, this key pitch was done by Genshin, focused on biodiversity and nature, was done by Voltaire AI, where they spoke about cold chain infrastructure, which was very unique. And then Tursa's Earth efforts to improve clean water access, which we know is such an issue in some of the developing countries. So it's just inspiring to see AI's growing influence in our communities. And I think the entire aspect of compliance, trust, and governance will is already there, but will get more robust, I feel. I agree. I absolutely agree. So I have a question for you, Ruchi. So we've been seeing, and you've alluded to some inspiring examples, not only in the, the usual workplace, but also what we're doing from a sustainability perspective and really improving our environment perspective. From A to X to Z, we've seen a lot and using agentic AI to reduce the friction and personalize those experiences. Beyond what you just described, what else do you see standing out to you as the most tangible examples of AI and what are they delivering for a measurable business impact? So, you know, I spoke about the, thank you so much for that question, uh, Manta, because I think everybody forgets that, you know, you would deploy AI, but you also have to measure it, right? And yeah. measure it tangibly with a business outcome. I'm just going to go back to William Sonoma and Pandora because those case examples really stuck with me quite a bit. And they showcased how data is used effectively to create, create those personalized experiences for a very valued customer experience. And I emphasize value being the key. Uh, like I said, from awareness to conversion to retention. I think very simply put, and I would love your thoughts as well, you know, they are very tight to tangible business impact impacting financial outcomes. So either it's revenue uh, mm -hmm. or William Sonoma talks about time and value of time. So productivity gains. Uh, she speaks about the effort, right, that you take in terms of any particular um, workflow that you're maintaining. And then when you talk about back office operations, it's the profitability impact. So the entire AI and the agentic AI era is very me measurable and very real in terms of what it gives back to us. What I hear behind that, and I completely agree with, is experiences. Experiences are leading the decisioning, irrespective of whether that's human-driven or AI-driven. Underlying that is an experience. What you described as the William Sonomics example and Pandora example is an experience. It's an improvement of a personal experience, a customer experience that then translates to that smile I see on your beautiful face, right? Adding to that, I think that experience, I, and I heard it also from Equinox, right? I, I sat through the session which had Equinox and then PenFed Credit Union. There was a CEO of PenFed with James Schenk on there as well. And they spoke about precisely that. How do you marry data with AI, but not in any order, with the human interaction, ultimately driving the foundation, which was an unsaid statement, which is it's the experience. And that's the driving force in the move forward. It results in the loyalty. It results in the trust in the brand. And it results in the repeat customer as well, while getting the customer in any channel they want to be in, but in a surprise and delight that might be different for you than me, but in the same ecosystem at the same time, which is powered by AI. And, you know, as a leader in the financial services space for such a long time, uh, let me ask you one of the last question, maybe, right? Uh, this is looking ahead futuristically for leaders who are just beginning their AI journey. And most of us are, you know, what's one piece of advice you'd share on turning ambition into action and ensuring AI adoption drives both trust and measurable outcomes by 2026? Oh my God, Ruchi, I love that question. Um, I say start small and be willing to take some small executable risks while also remembering the foundation of your customer and what's truly important to them. So in Williams-Sonoma, it's a surprise and delight of home, 
right? I'm, I'm oversimplifying. And in Equinox, it's the surprise and delight of health and fitness and wellness and so on and so forth. Leveraging the power of AI to reinvent your customer experience while also augmenting your talent like and their talent tool sets is paramount. Um, it's also important to partner with leaders. There's so many, so many AI leaders, so many capabilities that are out there. But one thing that was really loud for me at, at Dreamforce, but even more so just generally in this space is be prudent and smart with the leaders you partner with and engage in and that have engagement in your sector. Because like you said, we're all learning. We're all early days and we're going to learn from one another. And we'll learn in that disruption together. So those small executable steps will result to fast pivots and will result to the successes that reap the results that we're looking for. Mamta, I totally agree with you. And I do believe we heard very clearly through the conversation today, you know, that the AI adoption will increase incrementally. Mm -hmm. um, and just six things that I learned through some of the sessions I've been through was one, uh, for leaders, you know, you should start with a very clear strategic blueprint. The objective has to be very, very succinct. You mentioned this, a bite-sized approach, however, scalable. Mm -hmm. Having measurable incremental value is going to be paramount. And you need to ensure that that measurable impact is a business impact. Investment in data readiness, so reliability of data, the trust in data, and one thing I think a lot of us still remember, and I'm glad we do, that people are the most important. So how do we take along everybody? So a structured culture of learning with upskilling and a clear change management approach. And I think lastly, I'll end with really being transparent, right? And creating a reliant, reliable implementation pa uh, plan with toll gates, measures that ensures we can adapt and reiterate. I think I've enjoyed this conversation today. With what I said, any thoughts, any wrap-up comments you have, would love to get your uh, thoughts. Yeah, I love it, Ruchi, and I'm going to do the same. I think we've, you know, this is, you've wrapped it up quite well yourself. I think key things, key tenants is remember your customer, be thoughtful and mindful and start small on like, what is that customer journey? Um Results speak louder than words. So what is that ROI? What is that business impact? And don't forget your talent and the customer at the end of the day. We started with the person, we're ending with the person and the talent and educating and onboarding them in that journey is equally as important. I've so enjoyed this conversation, Ruchi. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for having this conversation with me. Thank you so much, Mamta. And I know you and I echoed the statement. One of my coaches mentioned it. Bring it on, agentic era. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.